What comes to your mind when you think of America? The answer to this question will vary from generation to generation. For the silent generation, it was probably hot apple pie and rock and roll. For the baby boomers, it was experimentation and nonconformity. And for the adventurous and ambitiously growing yuppies of the early 1980s, it was the iconic New York Towers. Known officially as the World Trade Centers, the Twin Towers were part of seven buildings within a complex located in the financial district of Lower Manhattan in New York City. If you hadn't already known, it may come as a surprise to you that these towers were only part of the World Trade Centers, as five other buildings were also working along with them, one of these a hotel. But due to their colossal size and being the original buildings, this term, World Trade Centers, was used interchangeably to describe these two mammoth structures, a clear indicator that their size alone was a huge component in making them so culturally significant. Built in 1973, they were the largest buildings in the world, and subsequently for the next two decades became a symbol for opportunity, a manifestation of the American dream. Overseeing nearly all of New York City, the Twin Towers became something you almost could not escape from. They followed you everywhere. A rather optimistic metaphor for how prosperity in the United States was just inevitable. But why did the Twin Towers even exist in the first place? How did the World Trade Centers help shape America? And what was the magnitude of their presence? This video will not focus on what the Twin Towers became, but instead will focus on what they were. For a lot of the younger people watching, they might not even know what the World Trade Centers did, and that's okay. With the passage of time comes the depreciation of knowledge for things that are now unfortunately only a part of the past, and the only way to keep their legacy living is to preserve their memory through artifact, historical record, and education. So what did the World Trade Centers do? What were they used for? Well, they were the centers for trading across the entire world. Yes, that's essentially what the Twin Towers were. They were office buildings. But what does that entail? I mean, that answer is kind of boring and apathetically leaves out a lot of important information. To really understand the magnitude of the World Trade Center's cultural impact requires diving into its development history, and that dates all the way back to immediately after World War II. The mindset of post-war America was to do better and be better. The US was now a superpower, and they had every plan to make themselves even bigger. And what better way to do that than with cutting-edge architectural technology that can not only increase employment and the amount of production in America, but also serve as a tourist attraction that brings people from across the world. And the concept of the World Trade Centers was born. But that's just it. It was only a concept, as the technological and economical limitations of the time made it incredibly difficult to actually start the project without it being backed by a great amount of funding. Until it finally was. Have you heard of a man named John D. Rockefeller? Of course you have. He's the creator of the Rockefeller Center and one of the most successful industrialists in history. Well, his grandson David Rockefeller was one of the main people to get involved in the Twin Towers project just a decade later. Having just built the Chase Manhattan Bank Tower, a World Trade Center would be an even bigger return on his investment. America was all about capitalism. And what did a post-war America need to really maximize off its current economic boom? More capitalism because the more of it you have, the more of a flourishing economy you will get. This was the philosophy of mid-century America. There was nothing to lose, and Rockefeller's affluence and political prowess could actually bring these theorized ideas to life. With his brother Nelson Rockefeller being the governor of New York at the time, it was easy for him to get the Port Authority of New York to help him with the project. 
Port Authority is a government body focused on creating New York City infrastructure. Something as large as the Twin Towers hadn't been done before, but they too saw their potential, so they might as well try the project. The politics of New York's Port Authority was filled with scandals, production issues, and financial struggle, and consequently delayed the World Trade Center's production by nearly 10 years. But construction finally began in 1966 and would be completed and open for business just seven years later. The towers were designed by architect Minoru Yamasaki, and although they might seem dated now, they were astronomically ahead of their time, introducing concepts that seemed like something out of the Jetsons. One of these incredible features was the Sky Lobby. As skyscrapers get bigger, obviously so does the number of floors and the number of people employed in the building. If you work on the 88th floor, being in a crowded elevator that could potentially have to stop 88 times to let people get on and off would just be a nightmare. Take the next one. The only way to better combat this would be to build more elevators, and that gets incredibly expensive. But not with the Sky Lobby. Located on floor 78 of Two World Trade Center, all you would have to do is take the non-stop express elevator to the Sky Lobby, and then take only 10 more stops on the regular elevators, saving so much time for people who need to get to work. It wasn't the first Sky Lobby, but it significantly popularized it. The Twin Towers also boasted its innovative architecture. Conventional skyscrapers of the time were built with a series of support beams spread about 9 meters apart from each other across the entire structure. This created a bit of interruption in regard to floor space. The support for the Twin Towers were the actual walls themselves, with a column of support beams in the middle. Not only did this create so much more floor space that owners could rent out and use to their advantage, but it made the towers incredibly sturdy. So much so that they were strong enough to withstand the impact of a Boeing 707, the largest airplane in the world at the time. Both of these new innovations alone made the concept of the infinitely large skyscraper possible. Literally, the sky was the limit. But upon the Twin Towers' grand opening, it wasn't all smooth sailing. Surprisingly, the Twin Towers were actually hated at first. Many New York residents described them as the eyesore of Manhattan. One person described them as a box of staples. They were the boxes that the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building came in. Its architecture was just so different from everything else in its environment, which threw people off. There was a reason for this though. Towers this big have to protect themselves from natural disasters or something like a plane crash, and that often comes at the expense of aesthetics. If it's efficient, it's probably going to be ugly too. The Twin Towers prioritized function over form. It was the most appropriate architectural compromise. But as time went on, people got accustomed to the towers, and many became quite enthusiastic about them. They sort of started a movement in Lower Manhattan. People fled to them. Opening thousands of more office jobs, it was a place of so much new opportunity. That was the mantra of the Twin Towers. Rent out an office and start a business. And that's exactly what many did. Their economic prestige and size would make them one of the main tourist attractions of New York, and the city was proud of that fact. And explore the other Manhattan. Being such tall structures made them visible practically everywhere across the city, and this indirectly made them a cultural icon to those who lived outside America, akin to the Eiffel Tower in France and their influence on the rest of the world would be fueled through its presence in several music videos, films, and TV shows.
Mecca restricted area. The World Trade Centers were the big apple of the eye. They became a symbol of America. Maybe not like the bald eagle or the American flag itself, but it was getting there. If you had asked people who lived in New York City what their thoughts were on the Twin Towers when they still existed, they would likely tell you that they were definitely significant, but not as iconic as maybe the Chrysler Building or the Empire State. They were less of an historical monument and more of just a symbol that there was more to come. But when they were gone, people truly felt its presence gone, and they didn't really get the chance to prepare for it. We see a lot of this with nostalgia. People who grew up in the 1980s didn't care for the 80s while they were in the 80s. They were busy being nostalgic for something else. They didn't realize how truly great the 80s were until they were already long gone. Oddly, a quote from The Office really resonates with this idea. If only there was a way to know that you're in the good old days before you actually leave them. The memory of the Twin Towers behaves in the same way. In some respects, the towers were something that people somewhat took for granted, and they didn't really understand their importance until it was too late. As we've learned from history, sometimes an unprecedented tragic event is what makes us see that. So were the Twin Towers important while they were around? Yes, but at the same time, it kind of just depended on who you were. It wasn't until after they were gone that their influence became more potent. They served as something greater than just office buildings. They symbolized opportunity as far as the eye can see. And with their dissolution, went away the idea of opportunity for a lot of the American people. It wasn't just the end of the 1990s but the end of a cultural golden age for America. The focus was now less on prosperity and more on cynicism and retaliation. It goes to show how tragedy can make the bigger picture often be overlooked. But with the new World Trade Centers comes a reformation for America, a whole new fresh start. And hopefully we can use this opportunity to not only get back on track, but to actually improve upon what we started with, to better the lives of everyone, and to help make the world a better place.